Welcome back, survivors. I'm Survival This, and we return to Siberian Expeditions, where I got a like technical thing I got to address because it might have come up in the last couple of Carnivores episodes or so. I switched over to the 3D FX Glide because it kind of fixes like the snowfall issue that a couple maps had in Siberian Expeditions, but I think it also has been causing a bit of like ah. Uh, encoder overload, or basically when I record, you might see me having to like cut out these parts of the video or everything like freezes still for a few seconds there. So I'm going to change back to Direct3D and we'll only bring out the 3D FX Glide on uh, the maps that really use it, like the uh, Tamir Island or I think there's another one. I'll have to check through this maps and see which one it is. but. I think I'll go for Direct3D just to try to avoid that little hang-up because I've never had it happen using Direct3D. At least, I don't think I have. You guys haven't mentioned anything, so... Tame Your Island is one that has it, and I think the other one is the Ural Mountains. Yeah, it looks like that one has Snowfall, so... Those are the two maps I think you need 3D FX Glide if you want them to work properly. But for somewhere like the Putarada Plateau, I think we should just be fine without. And I do want to test out the uh, low Bave Sniper Rifle, because we do finally have that unlocked. And along with that, I think we'll go for the Ibex. Try to keep going for these high point animals, so that we can keep steadily progressing through the mod. Everything else is looking okay. I'm One thing I do have to figure out on my own time is how my camera setup is. Like, you guys can't see... well, uh, no, you can't see the boom arm, but basically it's kind of in the display a little bit, or... It's in the way of me being able to see what I'm doing. So I'll have to try to figure out something to do there, just to try to get me the whole monitor uh, image back, or without having any obstructions in the way, but everything is looking pretty good, so we'll hop right into a brand new hunt. Okay, so we're all loaded into the plateau now. I gotta figure out... Okay, so the wind is blowing actually to the north, so... Surprisingly enough, we are actually in a good direction to just explore the map properly. So let's take a look at the- ooh. Okay, so it's a two and a half times scope from looks of it. Although I'm not sure what the, like, bar on the left is for. Is that supposed to be, like, your... battery life? I don't know. Okay, but- oh. Looks like we'll be able to put the sniper to the test pretty quickly, too. Oh yeah, that is nice, and it's loud, satisfying shot off with the rifle, too. Although, just in case, maybe I'll take the shotgun out. Yeah, that was a nice hit to get the uh, that first Ibex down. So we're off to a fantastic start this hunt, because that is our first animal down. We'll just walk up, take a little look-see at him. And then keep working our way down to the south a bit more. Oh. There's kind of pretty little... Um, not dandelions, or something else. I have terrible plant terminology. Animal terminology! I am fantastic with plants. Ugh. Just never was interested in learning about them too much. Now there's our first Ibex of the hunt. Okay, maybe it's just his breathing that I heard. I thought it almost sounded like kind of that low guttural bear-like sound. Might have just been how I caught the last bit of his breathing, though. Speaking of, maybe we'll try calling bear next, see if there's anything nearby. I was calling for bears, not the entire frickin' wolf pack. So I'm hoping that means that was just an ambient call, because otherwise we're going to have some issue. The wolves in this game are ferocious little things. They just go bolting straight for you. And unfortunately, one of the things about the Mortal Zone mods are the animals usually have like some inflated health points or have a lot of health to them unless you hit that Mortal Zone. There's kind of... yeah, I really do have to do a video of that one of these days. There's a correlation between how accurate the weapons are and whether the mortal zones are punishing or not. It actually came up in comments I was discussing with somebody else where 
depending on how they're handled, they can be really good and rewarding, or they can feel really limiting and difficult to pull off. But Severe and Expeditions is, I think, more of the... I think definitely depends on the weapon, but if you're using, like, a crossbow with sniper rifle, they feel very good. Like, the weapons are rather accurate, so you feel like you get reward out of it, and you're not too punished if you miss. Okay, just sent another musk deer off, but no replies from that. So I'll try for more Ibex. Nothing yet. We Maybe what we'll do... Ah, see, the only problem is, last time I went up on top of the plateau over there, I had the unfortunate circumstances of the wolf getting us, but... Like, there's such a big area of the map that is on that plateau-like area. And I think... Yeah, I think that actually is around the area where we got our first Ibex. Well, maybe not our first, but the first time we came to this map, we got some good Ibex in on the far side of the... To the west there, because it's along the river's edge almost. So maybe what we'll do is we'll climb our way up there. Because it is a lot of, like, area that we can really get into for more hunting. No, oh, yeah, speaking of. Okay, so we'll just try to carefully make our way up. See what we can do. We know he's somewhere up here, and that's actually... One of the interesting things about this map is it's... Ibex territory, like these large, hilly, mountainous areas. These are the places you'd expect to naturally find Ibex, and... I mean, they're living up to that in this mod, too, which is a happy little coincidence, I guess you could call it. There's not really a way to control the animal spawns, but just how they've... Oh, come on. Oh, dumb terrain geography. Seems like we're always running into problems with it. Okay, there we go. I think we're up over the little hurdle. Oh, come on. Yeah, we're up over that little hurdle that was stopping us, so we finally got our way up here. And actually, like, situations like this, like, just this kind of screenshot reminds me so much of, like, the Hunter Call of the Wild just downgraded in a way. If you've ever seen, like, those, uh, like, trying to emulate PlayStation 1 graphics or stuff like that, that is what this really reminds me of. It's like you tried to take just a more modern hunting game and downgrade it to something else that looks like it could run on, like, an old console or something, or, well, carnivores. It really shows you just how well and how... How do I want to word this? Like, how much attention to detail and effort was really put in to capture that? Like, it makes me very excited to see what else Tormer is going to be putting out. I know he's got... That Jurassic World mod he's got in the works. I'm not sure how progress is going on that. But yeah, his mods, you can definitely see how his experience has been helping, like, as it's going going along, and... Okay, it's close. I can hear its footsteps. Oh, just a musk deer. Okay, yeah, and... Looks like the capture's going okay. That's one thing where... I don't think it was last week's episode, but I do know... Okay, so I can just see his... Horns back there. You caused me a little bit of trouble there, just because you spooked me for... Oh, we're back into this area. I think this was actually the area that caused the... Well, maybe not caused, but where I had that, uh... Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Not this time. Not this time. And I am going to just use that last shot up because then I can do this long reload. There we go. Whew, that was almost a repeat of last week, I think. Because it was literally in this like flower field area. We had the other one take us down. And just, well, a little different than last time because last time we could actually see it wandering about. This time it was like, snap of the fingers, it was already after us because of that shot. This may work in our favor again because one of the things is this is a plateau area. So if we're on the top level of it, the Ibex is probably going to start running down and go towards like the sides or down off the edge of it. Which will hopefully let us have easier line of sight towards wherever it's gone off to. I heard something for a moment there. Okay, the captures are still looking okay. But that is one thing. I mean, I can't say I'm a professional doing this because I've never gotten anything out of it. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Ecosystem, I did actually get some recognition for as a content creator, which was nice. But, yeah, one of the things about getting more into this as, like, a sort of hobby, something to be keeping myself occupied with, is I got the dual monitors just to uh, make things a bit easier, but I didn't realize how big of a quality of life thing it is until, like, you lose one of them or you're back down to single monitor. It makes recording and capturing, like, all your footage a bit more difficult because you can't monitor as you're recording. You can't see the programs because of the way the monitor kind of is set up and like having game full screen. Having the two monitors? Oh, it's so, so nice. And it lets me really easily monitor oh, what's going on with the captures. So if there is an instance where it like hangs up or freezes, I can see that myself and I'll be able to kind of note that for easy editing later. Okay, so where the, what are you doing? I don't know what this guy's doing, because it looks like he's been hanging right around the very edge of the map area here. I was hoping maybe he would have gone down. Okay, actually, hang on, where's the blood? Okay, so here's the last little bit I found. So there's got to be more somewhere to him. Like, I'm not seeing it, unless maybe he went... Yeah, this is puzzling. Because it doesn't look like he's gone down towards the water. It looks like he's been sticking up along the ridging here. But then it just kind of like stops at this point here. Oh, that might be him. That might be the one that we got the first shot on. I haven't heard any other replies around here. Look, it says... Oh, Lord, there's a lot of area that that actually like, covers, so... Oh, there. Okay, I just saw a bit of movement. It might be hard for you guys to see on the capture because... Well, on the video, just because of how... Yeah, that's actually what I was hoping for. I, You know, it might not even be our same one, because I don't... Okay, we'll just get the shotgun out. I... Okay, I don't think there's anything else around us. I thought for a second I might have just heard, like, a footstep. But yeah, I don't think this is ours. Or at least not the one that we saw and shot before. Just because it's pretty... Okay, well, we got the water aiming starting up. Yeah, it's very far off from where we saw the blood droplets. And I don't see anything kind of going towards this area. So the one we started with, we'll kind of keep after. 
So we'll head back up to the topish area of the plateau. And try to pick up where it could have gone off to. Like, let's just assume that he did keep going along the ridge line here. No, that's the one we just tranked. Okay, so... Actually, you know what? Maybe what I'll do is try switching gears and let's try getting a bear. Because, I mean, the bear is the big point maker. A single bear is, I think, like two Ibex, so... If I was trying to be efficient, I would only go after bears, but I mean, we got to have a little bit of variety change things up now and again. Musk deer. Yeah, and maybe we'll just keep trying to call for the Ibex too. We might actually get it to respawn and be able to try taking it on the way. That could be it there. So it didn't sound like it's actually too far off for a reply. But you gotta be careful because something about this like bush area or like these flowering patches seems like the wolves love to hang out in this area. Okay, okay, we actually got quite a bit of distance to him. Yeah, I'm just going to scan with the binoculars. Musk deer. Okay, I don't, oh, musk deer. Okay, so it looks like we're safe. Okay, the ibex. Oh, it's going to be pretty hard to spawn from afar, I'm guessing. Oh, that wolf ambience does put me on edge, though. Like, every encounter with the wolves have had them pretty aggressive, and because they're so small, they can really get in close to you. We've gotten fairly lucky with the shotgun, but, I mean, it's been lucky with it. Okay, so, yeah, picked us up. It's running. It looks like he's more over that direction, so I'm going to try to get the wind to not be against us and go up this way and then cut over. Just because that wolf amies did have me a little bit nervous. Nothing over there. Nope. Oh, okay, yeah, so he's now over that way. I'm hoping because... Yeah, I see somewhere over that way. Now I'm going to work towards them. I'd like to try to get... We'll get this next Ibex and then try for one bear. And that should hopefully be another nice bundle of points. And that'll take us... Okay, I hear the footsteps, but I don't see it. Yeah, that's just the eagle owl. I might actually want the shotgun for this. Well, shotgun or crossbow, really. One thing's about crouching low to sneak your way around. that it kind of gets hard to actually see over stuff, but... Oh, okay, I think I know why we haven't been able to see it. There's must be... Yeah, it looks like this is like a slope, so it must be down on the edge here. Oh, 
Oh! We've also got a bear nearby. Okay, I'm hoping that spooked the bear off, so he's not coming for us. But... I really thought I would've been able to get that guy down much easier with, like, the almost point-blank sniper rifle shot. At least we kind of know there's a bear in the general area. And that second shot is exactly what I was hoping we'd get. I don't know if it was actually a mortal zone shot. It might have just been like two shots or that could have been three on him if that was our Ibex from before. Now we gotta try to figure out where the bear went. Because we heard him making some noise around here. Thankfully, he did seem to run off from the, uh... uh what we were up to with the sniper rifle. Well, it's hard to say what he's done. Like, I don't know if he'd actually... Okay, no, it sounds like he's still up on the plateau area somewhere. I wasn't sure if he would run down to the lower reaches or he'd stay up here, but it sounds like he's up here, and that means he might be on the slopes. That's going to make this a bit more troublesome. I think he's somewhere on the sl Okay, that's him, and it does sound like he's on the slope area. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think that was the only bear. I think there was another one down here that we might have scared off. Okay, not scared off. Oh. Screw the shotgun! The shotgun is terrible! It is terrible, but we're going to exit the area. I hate the stupid, terrible, horrible shotgun. It sucks. It has always sucked, and it's always going to suck. So we're going to just, no, we're never taking the shotgun again. I am sick and tired of it failing on us. Like, for what's supposed to be a clustered area shot, it seems like it's way too all over the place. There's no reliability to it. My talk's about how, oh, the weapons directly correlate to mortal zones. Yeah, this thing, throw it out. It is awful. Do not use. It's only handy if, like, comes down to it, you're lucky if you get the wolf down. Do not rely on this, though. Do not rely on it. And because of that... <sighs> so that was, like, all of our points gone, too. So that'll be the last hunt we'll probably do on the plateau. We'll go to Saiyan Taiga next, trying just for brown bears, because again, it's all about the point grind now, and this is one of the mods where, like, it feels like it's a decent point curve up until the frickin' Snow Leopard here, it means 55,000. But yeah, it's gonna take us a while to get that, we need 50,000 just for the AUG. 
it's going to be quite a while before we get some new stuff aside from seeing the maps. But for now, thank you guys for joining me on this episode of Siberian Expeditions. If you did like the video, be sure to give us a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave it all in the comments right down below. And until I see you all in the next episode, though, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.